When is the last time you thought about Command Center inside of Zoho CRM? I'll be honest, it's been a while for me. <laughs> I had to refresh myself because Zoho is actually now rolling out Command Center 2.0 for CRM. And I think it's worth a second look. So we're actually gonna go through their write-up on the new functionality today. I'll be sharing my thoughts and how this might affect your installation. So let's jump right in. So here we have the full write-up here on Command Center 2.0. It's quite long. There's lots of graphics, lots of images, kind of a breakdown here in the middle that we're gonna go through step by step. But as a quick high-level reminder, what Command Center essentially is, is it's a process management tool in Zoho CRM. It's kind of like a blueprint in that you build it out in a flowchart style view with transitions and stages. The difference is, is that it's a lot less restrictive than a blueprint. It's not as much of a compliance tool. And it's very centered around communication and engagement with that client, right? So making a certain decision whether or not an email has been opened, right? That's kind of where you're starting to think about Command Center. I'll tell you, a lot of the times for our implementations historically, we've used mostly workflows and blueprints to accomplish the same thing just because of some feature limitations and functionality limitations of Command Center. But a lot of those seem like they're getting resolved here with this update. So let's actually jump on in they kind of have this for initial breakdown, right? We have a, you know, hospital business for geriatric care, and we want to move them through a set of stages and processes, right? So they submit a registration, we create the patient record, we want to get them to book an appointment. Once that consult's been done, we're either going to check in or they didn't show up, right? So we're kind of tracking these different decision points in a flowchart style view, where the goal is to work them to some kind of endpoint. The core of Command Center is one, bringing some of the performance tracking to each step. Like we kind of want to know once we have that console created, how many people aren't showing up. That's an important metric because you want to do things to make that number go down. Or you could look at it from the other framework, which is how do we increase the number of people who do actually show up? How do we minimize reschedules or maybe have reschedules happening a bit earlier, right? So a command center is really a way to build a process where a lot of the process steps might rely on the client doing a certain thing, responding to an email, opening an email, at least getting that piece of information. And if you're finding this useful so far, I do wanna ask, uh, make sure to like and subscribe down below. It's a free way to help us out and leave any comments with any questions or video requests that you have for future videos. As always, if you want some help setting this up in your account, you can head on over to zanata.com and click on book a meeting. We'd love to chat. With that, let's get right back to it. What exactly is new inside of Command Center 2.0? Well, let's go through their breakdown here step by step. So first off, new UI for it. The previous UI was fine, not the most intuitive thing. They've done kind of a refresh, just modernize it, make it look a little cleaner. And they've kind of defined some color coding and icons for like the good and bad things that can happen. So if a new lead comes in, I send them an email and they never open it. I might move them to an email ignored stage. And I want to color code that as like a bad stage, right? Where I don't want them to go. This is kind of nice if somebody new needs to get up to speed on a process flow. Color coding, it seems minor, but it does help people understand what's going on. Lots of new accessibility features, really just making it easier to use, right? So as we're adding a particular element, they've got new icons, new information, just making it easier to quickly select in that stage transition, you know, success or failure. As we look at the signals as well, they have a bunch of signals that we can track that are pre-built, right? So if you think about like a workflow, right? I can definitely set up a workflow that says, hey, if I send an email and the subject line is X, and it's not open for seven days, do a certain thing. But as you could imagine, as you work through a process like this, you could have five, six, seven different emails that are going to inform your process, whether they've been opened, clicked, or ignored. And so being able to just click and drag that into a UI rather than having to like set up a separate workflow criteria statement for each and every one of those is a lot easier to set up. And then lastly, they've added just to make it a little easier to like click and drag and move transitions from particular stages. So just like the workflow for putting one of these together for that admin user should be a lot easier in this new UI. Now let's get into the real meat and potatoes functionality changes. A big one here right out of the gate is they're detaching stage from the particular record. Now 
Why is that a good idea? Well, let's say you have a lead and you like to track lead status in five primary buckets, right? Maybe you have not contacted, attempted contact, contacted, junk, and qualified, right? Kind of a simple five-step or five different stages that are available for a lead. Well, if you're building a command center, you could really think about within each of those big stages, you might have many sub-stages, right? Like in attempting to contact, well, I might have four different contact attempts I'm going to make. Email one, call one, text one, and then a final call, right? So those might be five sub-stages. Now, if my stage has to be a field on my lead, then I'm kind of stuck with creating another field, adding all of those stages into there, making sure that different types of field actions, email responses, et cetera, are all automatically updating those stages. And you're really just creating a lot of work for yourself, right? As the configurer, because you have to make sure that you've accounted for every different thing that might actually require that sub stage to move. And then you also will have need to have set up workflows to automatically track all of those or have your team automatically track all of those. That's not exactly ideal. It works well for something like a blueprint, right? Where you're going to really tightly constrain everything and all those stages are going to be moved by the blueprint itself. But in this case, there's a lot more nuance to like a communication based process flow. And so detaching the stages actually makes a lot of sense. This is something that we see with uh, kiosks inside of Zoho CRM, right? You can build those flows independent of specific records, specific stages, specific fields on top of those. And it allows them to work a lot more flexibly across the system. Next one up here, the ability to manage identifiers. So what does this mean? This is a bit more technical. Basically what you're looking at here is you're saying, hey, for each of these journey steps, how are we going to associate them back to that customer record? Because they're they're all kind of different, right? Like a task being completed, you're going to associate that to a lead based on like the related to ID of that task. But like an email being opened, well, that might not directly correlate to that lead ID. So I might want to do that based on the to address of that email. So that's really all that this is, is saying, hey, as you're setting up this journey or this flow, we're going to be looking for emails that are clicked by this person. How do I figure out which person that is, right? So you're able to come in here and set those. My advice is less is more. I'd probably have a lot less than they're showing here. I want to have one main identifier that I know is always going to exist. And then I'm going to use that to establish that relationship to that particular record. Here's a big one too, is creating and defining specific goals. This is something where, you know, at Zanata, we kind of serve two different roles for our clients. One is like the Zoho consultant and developer. The other is a bit of like a business analyst where we're kind of looking at your process flows and trying to figure out where exactly there might be deficiencies. And one of the places that we do see is unclear goal setting. Meaning if I have a lead come in inside of the Zanata CRM, right? A look behind the curtain, somebody fills out a form, they land in my CRM as a lead. The main goal that I want to have first is qualification. I want to have some type of process in place that gets me to a point where I can determine, is this lead going to be a good fit for us? So perfect example, if somebody were to fill out our form and they really just need help with Zoho people or HR systems, they wouldn't be a great fit for us. It's just not an area that we spend a lot of time. So my first goal is to qualify them. My next goal is if they're qualified, right? So if we think about the flow chart, right? If we go back up here, like qualified might be a stage here. And then if they're qualified, I'd like to move them to discovery meeting booked, right? They show it just going to deal one as like an example. We all know there's kind of quite a few stages between there, uh, but I want to be able to define these goals and then work my records towards them in specific ways. Now, we can define goals in a few different options. A goal could be just getting to a stage, whether we take path A, B, or C, I just want to get them there. A goal could also be taking a predefined path. So let's say that like a really good lead might go down path A. It's quick, it's easy, it's painless. Path B is a bit more arduous. We're calling them more, we're emailing them more, we're trying to get them onto the calendar because they've reached out to us, right? I might say, hey, my goal is really that path A gets used. I'm fine with path B if I have to, but I wanna have some goals around that. 
Lastly, it would be like time taken to reach a stage. That's really valuable. Um, a lot of companies, they come in and you do CRM automation. Like what, you know, what's the point of building all of this stuff in your CRM? It's really to move more leads down the pipeline effectively and to move them down that pipeline more quickly, right? Now, obviously there is a, you know, a limit to how fast you can go. Sometimes you have to have a meeting. We can't just skip that. But I could set some type of goal to say like, hey, we should be getting them onto a discovery meeting within one week of them filling out our form, or we should be making an introduction to somebody who'd be a good fit, right? So like we can define these goals and then now we can actually track them in our command center. Last one here too is like when you have a end stage or a terminal stage, basically meaning like deal one, deal lost, follow up later, right? These types of things that like end that process for now. We can now set them as a certain type of sentiment, right? So basically saying good, neutral, or failure to determine, again, for visual clarity as I look at it and for reporting, exactly how we're doing, right? Are most people landing in success stages or neutral maybe? Like a follow-up later, I wouldn't say it's the end of the world. It's okay. It's neutral, but you know, it's not a failure. It's not like, hey, we don't want to hire you. And then lastly, you're able to also set up, or not lastly, actually, we're able to basically set up time and stage for predefined SLAs. So this is something like, hey, if a deal is in the stage called ready for proposal, right? This again, kind of a real one that we use at Sonata. If we're ready for a proposal, meaning like we've had the discovery meeting, we filled out the deliverables, we have like kind of the due date, the budget, kind of what we need to know so that our team can do a good job. We don't really want it to sit there for like two weeks with them waiting to get the signable proposal from us. We want to move that part pretty quickly, right? And like different parts of your flow are going to naturally move at different speeds. But for us, like once a client has gone through the process of doing the discovery, doing their homework, maybe giving us some of their documentation, I don't want them to sit there in limbo for a week waiting for, you know, our quote. Being able to set these expectations around like the time to move through certain transitions is a really good habit, right? We oftentimes think about SLAs when it comes to support requirements, but they really do make sense for sales requirements as well. Here's a big one, and this is similar to, they almost took this from like the blueprinted processes, is you're running actions for a specific transition not the specific stage. And so this is meaningfully different to how we would do it in a workflow right now. So for those who've done CRM configuration, you kind of know like, hey, when deal stage goes to proposal sent, create this task. But you do have those scenarios where it's like, well, what if they are a repeat customer? So they actually went from stage one and skipped all the way to stage four because we didn't have to do pre-qualification. We didn't have to do a credit check, whatever it may be. That might mean that I want to set up a different automated action. And it could even be as simple as like, instead of sending template A as an email, I'm sending template B, right? Like, hey, you're pre-qualified. Here's your proposal versus like, hey, here's your proposal. And also fill out this form because this would be our first engagement together. Right. So we're landing in the same stage, but we're taking a different pathway. And now what you're basically doing is setting up that action to be stage based. So it's still triggering when we hit qualified or when we hit proposal sent. But it has the nuance to understand that based on how I got there, I might want to automate a different thing. Right. So this is one that I'm actually really excited about because there's a lot of scenarios where there are real differences that matter based on that pathing. Um, so really excited to see that. Again, a couple other updates that we'll run here on the back end. That's kind of the meat and potatoes of it. But a couple more. They've done some renaming on some of the stages. So things are now called states instead of stages. And they're called signals. Like a customer opening an email would be a signal rather than being called a trigger. The thing that this also expands is that if you're using any custom signals, you can actually have them trigger from other parts of the system that are unconnected to move them through a command center. Now, how does that matter? Maybe you have a scenario where for certain types of deals, we create a related record called a technical proposal, right? Because maybe you're doing a blueprint work and in some cases you have to loop in an architect and, and they really need to be like a whole separate process for that type of deal, just coming up with an example. When that related record hits a certain stage, that could be a custom signal. Right. And now I'm going to move that command center forward automatically. These also bring the naming conventions in line with that new interactions tab that lives in the timeline, where a lot of things organize around stages and signals to move through process steps. So I'm happy about that. 
one piece of feedback we get a lot is like, why is the same functionality called different things in different places? And I've seen that Zoho has been kind of slowly but surely normalizing a lot of the terminology, which is great, especially for newer people to the platform. Because previously you would see signals in some places and triggers in another. And it's like, are those the same thing? And it's like, yeah, they are, but you have to go and research that. So again, naming conventions, they do matter at the end of the day. To quote our VP of operations, Josh, we want things to be clear and defined. Next one up here, again, some of those things that have been added, those identifiers, that's a big one for more complicated command center processes. For simple ones, it's always kind of worked well, but you're basically saying, hey, we might not have a specific lookup field to move things through based on these related signals. So I'm going to define other identifiers that can be used so that the system can correlate an action elsewhere in the system to that record that's moving through a command center process. You can also now backtrack. So if you move backwards in the process, you can choose to re-trigger some of those actions. And then again, like we mentioned, we've got the goals, SLAs, and the sentiment management for end stages. Really excited for this one. I think it's going to be a jumping off point for us to kind of revisit command centers. Let me know with a comment down below if you'd like me to record like a full tutorial on these where I actually get my hands dirty and maybe we build one out together using some of these new tools. All of this should be rolling out here pretty shortly. So yeah, essentially... By this week, it sounds like this should be hitting most of the people. You can, of course, reach out to them and kind of get ahead of the line, right? So if you're really excited for this, reach out to them and they'll move you over ahead of schedule. But yeah, really good one. I'm interested to hear down below. Just is this something that people are using? Are our current command center users happy to get this new functionality? So let me know down in a comment. While you're down there, be sure to like and subscribe. It's a free way to help us out. Make sure that YouTube knows that we're putting out good stuff. So if you liked it, let us know. And as always, if you'd like some help setting this up in your Zoho account, just head on over to Zanata.com and click on book a meeting. We'd love to help. My name is Tyler Colt, and I will see you next time.